I'm Rick the Pilot Teacher and in today's video I'm going to give you a whole bunch of tips that can really save your butt and stress as you start in your flying career. It's going to be great, so stick around for them all. They have all saved my rear end. So, tip number one. Learn how to use all the equipment on your aircraft before you actually need to use it. Um, this is my remote refueling pump. It's a, what's called a GPI pump. It's made by a company called GPI. And when I was very early in my career, I come straight out of kind of flight instruction and I've never really done any utility or bush flying um, where I've had to refuel that wasn't from a fuel truck or at an airport. And the company that I work for had this all separated down and the connections on the input and output of my GPI pump were the same. I was on my first job, I needed to refuel. I didn't know about the GPI pumps, I'd never been shown, and I connected the GPI pumps outlet to the inlet that goes into the drum of the fuel drum. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't pump. So you can imagine my panic when I'm out in the middle of nowhere and I don't have enough fuel to get back to the hangar and my fuel pump isn't pumping fuel. So, yeah, oh, and of course I didn't have cell service. So after taking it all apart, checking the strainers, checking everything, um, I sat down, had a break, looked at it. I was like, oh, I wonder if it goes the other way. Because at the time, there was no writing on it, which is in and which is out. Um, so yeah, I connected it up the right way and boom, surprise, surprise, it worked. Um, so the moral of this story is, don't wait till you need the equipment to learn how to use it. If you're new into um, your career and or if you're new to a company and they've got some different gear to what you're used to, Get one of the guys to show you how it works. Trust me, it saves so much stress when you can be seen in a hangar or when it can be shown in a hangar rather than you trying to figure it out in the middle of nowhere when you're by yourself and sort of you spending a night in the bush um, just because you got your fuel pump connected the wrong way around. Um, yeah. Trust me, Irish stress. I swear I took 10 years off my life. So, tip number one, learn how to use all your equipment before you need to use it. Tip number two, fuel cap. Always, always put it on your seat whenever you take it off. You'd be surprised how many people take off and forget to put this thing back on. I've done it. I did it on a Jet Ranger way way back in my career ours have the key on a lanyard so some pilots just leave it kind of dangling on the jet ranger it had a fuel cap on a lanyard by where the fuel cap goes and i was in a rush didn't do my walk around, didn't check the fuel cap after I'd refueled, and I took off. And pretty much this whole area of the aircraft got battered by the fuel cap because it was on a lanyard, it couldn't go anywhere, so it just smacked the bejesus out of the paint. Uh, so yeah, so I felt really, really bad, but then two weeks later, one of the junior pilots actually wrote the aircraft off. Luckily, he was fine, but um, it was a big, big wake-up call for me. And when I was telling this to a, one of the old salt pilots, he said, put the fuel cap on your seat, and then you will never, ever, ever forget to put it back on. And to this day, 15 years later, never, ever flown off without my fuel cap. So that's tip number two. Get your fuel cap, take it off, put it on your seat. It will save your butt one day from at least buying a case of beer for the maintenance engineers, or even worse, you could possibly be losing your job. So fuel cap, seat. 
Okay, tip number three is to check your NOTAMs or notices to airmen. And these are basically, if you're not got that far into your career yet, these are basically notices that the FAA, Transport Canada, um, CAA in the UK or CASA in Australia put out to basically inform pilots of things that are either not working or are out of service or not working properly um, or airspace closures, things like that. So again, early in my career, you can kind of see a bit of a pattern forming here. It's, you know, the young, dumb, stupid kind of thing. Um, I never really used to check my NOTAMs. Uh, I'd just be flying off the base and just kind of local stuff. Well, one day I got tasked to go to a, uh, another base that the operator owned, but it was a remote satellite base that uh, nobody was based there. We just have a hangar there. And... I had to go there for a week's worth of work, flying crews out into the mountains, drop them off so they can do some survey work. Anyway, um, it's at an airport. So I'm like, cool, load up my stuff. Off I went. Get to the airport, bearing in mind this is like a teeny tiny town, and there's no fuel. They had issued an OTAM to say that they had run out of fuel, and it was going to be a week before the fuel truck was able to get there to... Um, refill the tank. So now I'm hooped. Here I am with a week's worth of work ahead of me and I've just showed up and I've got not got enough fuel to get back and I've got customers arriving expecting to go fly every day and we've got no fuel. So yeah you can imagine that phone call that I had to make to my chief pilot and you can also imagine the um, <laughs> The ear bashing that came from the other end of the line. Um, luckily, the chief pilot was good friends with one of the pilots that was actually at uh, another company based on the airport, another small company. But they had plenty of drummed fuel because of this reason. Um, and my basically my chief pilot arranged for me to be able to go and steal you know a dozen drums so i could actually work during the week you know and it cost me a case of beer to the guy and yeah i was on pretty much crappy hanger jobs for the rest of the season for that one um but you know it worked out good the customer didn't know any different but because i didn't check the note times before i went it ended up putting me and my company in a very unprofessional position um so you know, just a quick two minute check of the no terms on the internet would have been able to either rearrange that job or to get some uh, fuel to be delivered in drums by road by my company. Um, so, yeah, another lesson learned. Kind of you can see there, there's a bit of, <laughs> bit of a pattern forward here. Young and stupid and it's all involved fuels, you know, fuel caps, fuel pumps, no fuel. Um, and kind of fuel's quite important. So. <laughs> You kind of need it. Without it, you're not going nowhere. Um, so, yeah, check your OTAMs because one day it could catch you out. And luckily, my chief pilot knew a friend there. Without that, <laughs> I don't know what we'd have done. <laughs> I'd have probably had to wait a day for my company to truck in um, a whole load of drum fuel. But, um, yeah, it wouldn't have looked very professional. So... Check your NOTAMs, guys. Click of a mouse, takes two minutes. Um, I check them all the time now. Okay, the next tip I've got, dry erase marker. This thing is so handy, it is unreal. And basically, write notes on your window. It works fantastic. Um, I use it all the time, especially when I'm on fires or something like that and they've issued a new radio frequency or I'm working with multiple other aircraft I can just basically uh, take my pen off the dashboard basically write down the aircraft identification numbers also as I go go along I learn the pilot's name so I can put the pilot's name there um, just little things like that and the information is always there if I'm going into a new airport that I've not been to before I can just put the tower frequency ADIS frequency runway numbers, you know, little stuff like that. And I can just have it up out of the way in my window and it works awesome. And you basically just get a cloth and wipe straight off. So always carry a dry erase marker in your flight bag. Just make sure it's not a Sharpie. <laughs>
<laughs> that would be bad. Yeah, you cover the window in Sharpie. Mm. Wouldn't like to. Uh, wouldn't like to try that one. Okay, guys. My next tip is to close your eyes whenever you open any air vents in your aircraft. Now, in the A Star, we've got fresh air vents right here. And when I open the basically this little lever here, it sprays nice, cool air out. Problem is, helicopters are awesome at collecting dust. And if you're flying along, especially in the A-Star, you open the air vent, poof, dust straight in your face. And dust in your eyes when you're flying, especially if you're in a hover or something like that, oh my God, you could be in a serious, serious situation. So either put your visor down on your helmet, close your eyes whilst you open that vent, but don't ever, ever, ever open an air vent without at least having your eyes closed in an aircraft because dust in your eyes can lead to a very serious accident. Okay, the next tip I've got for you is to never ever be afraid of air traffic control. Um, I was petrified when I first started to learn to fly. I thought that person on the end of the radio was gonna tear my head off if I just said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing. And actually really nice guys and girls. I went and spent an afternoon in uh, a tower and then in uh, radar, basically tree cam, um, basically watching the, the planes get guided into final approach. And it was awesome. And basically they had two tips for me. First one was always ask. Without us as pilots, they don't have a job. Um, and they would much rather help you early on than and try and help you when you've got a problem. So just get in touch with them. Just say, you know, I'm a student pilot or whatever. I'm a new pilot. They will then slow their talking down. Um, works really good. Really, really helpful. Second tip is if you're going into a busy airport that you've never flown into before, give the tower a call, a t you know, a day or two before. Ask them, say, hey, this is where I'm coming from. Um, where do you want me to be? What what do you normally have as a procedure for aircraft coming in? Um, are there any landmarks? What altitude do you want me to be on? Um, what frequency do you want me to be on? Um, you know, it can be very daunting going into a busy airport. But if you've already spoke to one of the tower controllers, and it may even be the one that's working tomorrow, they can just say, yeah, come down this highway when you get to this uh, baseball stadium. Give me a call on this frequency. I'll know where you're coming in. I'm going to know where you're going to go. And I can basically just direct you straight in. And it's beautiful. Um, I've done this a few times. The first time I ever went into Portland International in Oregon, I called them up and said, this is where I'm coming in from. And it was just like, yeah, just do this, 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 this and this. And I flew in and it was as if I was going into a very small airport. It was awesome. So remember, they are there to help you and Give them a call, have a chat, tell them where you are, what you want to do, and uh, when you're thinking of coming in, and ask them how they want you to fly in. Makes their job a lot easier. If their job's easy, your job's easy. So I'm still here waiting for my customers, and yeah, not here yet. Still doing the thing out in the trees. Um, but basically, one of the tips that I've got is when you are starting into your career working kind of um, with customers, Actually, I think they're coming right now. Um, it's basically get the time they want to meet and work yourself backwards. So if they want to be lifting off at nine, okay, how long is it going to take you to refuel the aircraft? Get it pushed out, get it cleaned, get all the gear on board, get the daily inspection done, get the paperwork done. Um, you should generally have an idea of how long it's going to take so that you can be ready at least 20 minutes before they arrive. Everything's done and it's just a case of then welcoming them give them the safety brief, get them on the aircraft, closing the doors and firing up. So whatever time they want to leave, work backwards and then that's the time that you've got to arrive at the hangar. Next tip that I've got, I always have my book to keep all my times in. In my book, post-it note. Well, the best thing about a post-it note is, especially in a helicopter, sun visor. Simple, works really good. You know, if you're flying east in the morning or west at night, helicopters, we don't have sun visors like the fixed wing guys do. Um, you know, and that sun can just be just 
oh, even with the sunglasses on or with your visor on and your helmet, it can be a nightmare. So just take a sticky note. What I do is I put it upside down. That way then the airflow coming up through uh, my windscreen basically just keeps it flat and then just blocks the sun. It's great. It doesn't block out too much, so it doesn't restrict any vision. You can easily look around it. But when you've got the blinding sun just in one position, if you're doing a ferry flight, you know, an hour long flight, stick your post-it note up. It works great. I've been using it for well over a decade and uh, I got showed it by another old salt pilot. Works fantastic. The last tip that I've got for you is a, just a bonus and this one will save your rear end time and time again and basically it's called the three step rule whenever you walk away from your aircraft whenever you leave it at night whenever you've parked it take three steps turn around walk back check your doors are latched your cargo holds are latched make sure your battery is turned off i know so many pilots and i've almost done it myself walked away battery's been left on Good to start the aircraft two or three hours later she no go and you're stuck out in the bush and the only way that somebody can come and get you is they got to come out and get you or unless you're smart enough to put on uh, a start pack on board that you can just plug into the uh, battery socket on the aircraft and basically give yourself a bump start um, but basically three-step rule and the other thing that I always do is I never, ever, ever turn off my anti-collision light. It always stays on because that's another visual indication. As I walk away, I turn around and I look at my anti-collision light. If that's flashing, I know my battery's still on. Um, let's go and have a look. It's probably still on now. Yep, there we are. Master battery is off. Anti-collision light is on always stays on it's done that for every every aircraft that i've flown saved my ass so many times if you found these tips helpful that's awesome i hope they save your butt too if you liked it give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you next time